It has been three years since the release of the M1 Max Mac Studio, and it was lauded as one of the best devices in recent history. Creators like MKBHD, for example, and the like still use this Apple Silicon chip for their everyday workflow. But the question is why? There are certainly more powerful Apple computers or systems that have been released since the M1 Max, like the M2 Max or even the M2 Ultra. So why is the M1 Max so popular even in 2024? That is something I hope to answer in this video. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. What is so special about the M1 Max Mac Studio and why should you get one? First of all, Apple intended the Mac Studio to be for pro-level creatives like your music producers, movie editors, and the likes. So they put so much power and efficiency into something that is small but compact at the same time. It has a metallic body that blends into your desk. It can be used with any display you throw at it. It is hands down one of the most impressive computers that I have used personally in a while. And the reason I decided to get one was because I needed something with a lot of power that can take applications like Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, Photoshop, and any other software in my creative journey. And the M1 Max Mac Studio does everything and more. I was stuck between getting this and the M2 Pro Mac Mini. And while the Mac Mini is great or is a great device to have, the Mac Studio is more pro level with the different ports, which we'll get to very soon. And of course, let's talk about the design. To be very honest, looking at this thing every morning gives me a sense of uh, seriousness. It makes me feel like I am doing something worthwhile. It is very expensive, it is very premium, and it is a constant reminder that creating content allowed me this opportunity to own one. If it isn't clear by now, I love the design of the Mac Studio. The square shaped design with the rounded corners are aesthetically pleasing. The silver colorway blends in my desk pretty well, and it doesn't weigh much. It weighs only around six pounds or so, which doesn't matter because it's something that you shouldn't really be carrying around. But if you do, and you need a computer on the go or at different locations, with a different monitor display, you can take this anywhere with you and you just start working like nothing really changed. Also, if you can do me a favor, a like and a subscription to the channel will be very much appreciated. We are so close to 20,000 subs, so thank you for your support. It does mean a lot. I think the Mac Studio being small but mighty is one of its biggest advantages. It has so much power in a very compact build, so the flexibility is out of this world. A few more reasons to get this if you are in the creative industry are the number of ports the Mac Studio will give you. The front has two USB-C ports with up to 10 gigabits of speed per second when it comes to data transfers and an SD card reader. The SD card reader is gold because once you finish shooting, you can just slot it without even thinking of a memory card dongle or doing a camera to computer data transfer with the cable. This cuts the editing process or your workflow process in half almost. At the back, it has more ports than you can actually use. It has four Thunderbolt 4 ports with up to 40 gigabits per second, which means you can also simultaneously export to five displays if working with five displays is your thing. It has an ethernet port, two USB-A ports, one HDMI port, and of course, a headphone jack. It has built-in speakers, but I wouldn't really recommend them as they're not loud enough, nor are they good for listening to music or even editing any form of audio. And that is something a lot of people have to consider before they get this. So this is a portable computer without a screen, without a keyboard, a mouse, or even a webcam. So video calling or even doing things like FaceTime is not possible, unless you get a webcam. I'd like to thank Opspot for sponsoring this video. Getting the right webcam is essential if you work from home. You do not want a situation where people can't see you or the video quality is so bad that it puts people off. With that, Opspot sent me the Tiny 2 and this thing might be tiny, but it packs a lot of features. For one, it has an ultra large sensor that allows in more light. The auto tracking is pretty awesome, especially if you're moving around and you want to stay the main subject of the frame. And it has four times faster focusing than the competition due to its 50 megapixel sensor. The 50 megapixel lens also allows for better low light performance. So you don't always need the sun or any kind of key lights for it to work as intended. One thing Opspot has done is create gesture controls that actually work and they've infused it with AI. If I use my fingers to form the letter L, it detects that hand gesture and zooms in and out, and it is very responsive. 
You can also download the app from their website. It is like their control center that houses everything. So if you're live streaming games and you want people to see your controller or your keyboard, for example, you can do that by pressing the desktop mode. You can also adjust how far or how close you want the camera to be on you with these features. All in all, I found the Opspot Tiny 2 to be very intuitive. And if you're interested in this, I'll leave a link down in the description below to get started. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have regarding the Tiny 2. Thanks again to Opspot for sponsoring this video. All right, let's move away from the design and let's talk about what you really want to know, the performance and why this is a must have for creatives or people in the industry. Just to give you a little bit of context, this is the base model of the M1 Max Max Studio. That is 32 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage, and so on. Now, if you want to talk about the pros and cons, there is a huge con, and that is the base model for something as powerful as this should have a base storage of one terabyte as opposed to 512. Now, if you did want to upgrade to one terabyte, it'll cost you a lot more. For obvious reasons, my needs and your needs are very different. I'm a YouTuber who uses different softwares and applications that are well optimized for the Apple Silicon and perform very well. Let's take Final Cut Pro for example. To export an eight to 10 minute video that is 4K S-Log footage, it takes about two minutes to export it from Final Cut and I then take it to YouTube to upload for you guys to see. By contrast, if you use a top end PC, it might take longer to export even if that PC has more raw power. Apple has found a way to fully optimize this computer to work with other applications. It also has the same effect for DaVinci Resolve as the export times are very fast. That being said, if you wanted to use the Mac Studio and base it on just raw power, then it's lose on every front as there are PC builds that are far more powerful than this. But like I said, context really is everything. The next thing I've liked so far is how smooth and snappy the operating system is. It is currently on Sonoma 14.3.1 and it has been a joy to have for the most part. Hopefully the next few iterations of this will just be as smooth. All in all, would I recommend the M1 Max Max Studio? And yes, <laughs> I would. It is a great computer that is so compact, it fits into at least 90% of workspaces. It has all the ports in the world to comfortably use four to five monitors if you want to do that. And I realized it is future-proof. I do not see myself changing this for the next two or maybe three years, but as long as this keeps serving me well, it'll always have a place by my side. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked what you saw, click that like button and subscribe to the channel. My name is KJOS and I'll catch you guys in the next one.